with us today. Um, you are the founder and CEO of Lately. Um, we're really excited about this technology uh, here at on Leading Entrepreneurs of the World. We like to look into kind of what's next. And we definitely think this is one of those, this is what's next type of technologies. Um, so we would love to have you kind of explain your a little bit of your journey to this point. And then um, I know you are going to be talking about the copywriting rules that we wish we would have learned in college. Um, I don't know if I was paying attention during that portion of <laughs> classes or not, but uh, I'm anxious to learn something. So uh, Kate, we're glad you're here and I will turn it over to you. Thanks. Uh, well, no one can blame you. I mean, there's so much going on in college. <laughs> or there used to be when people used to actually be able to go to college, right? Uh, um, but great to, great to be here, Jonathan. And hi, everybody. I love knowing where people are. So pop in the chat and let us know where you are, what the weather is. It's snowing here in the Hudson Valley, which is shocking and um, really putting a wrinkle in my day. <laughs> uh, but don't be shy, uh, for sure. So um, a little bit, hey there, Emma, about me. I'm just going to do a quick screen share and show you guys. So I used to actually be a rock and roll DJ, believe it or not. <laughs> my last gig was broadcasting to 20 million listeners a day through uh, XM satellite radio. It was a wild ride. I met, I met the Stones among, among other people and a husband in there. There he is. Um, and I learned a lot about the neuroscience of music and more, more importantly, how it um, let me turn my listeners into fans, which is really what marketing and sales is about as well. So you want to think of um, turning customers into evangelists, right? How much more valuable that is, Jonathan, you know? Um, so between radio and Lately, which is the um, software company I now own and founded, I was also a, a marketing agency owner and I ended up getting Walmart 130% ROI year over year for three years, um, back with a spreadsheet system. Remember spreadsheets? <laughs> so <laughs> I combined what I learned in radio and through that spreadsheet system to create uh, the only social media management platform that creates content for you with artificial intelligence. Yeah, the fascinating technology. Um, really excited to uh, look into that and, and been digging around a little bit and seeing where you guys develop that out for sure. Um, so copywriting obviously is an important thing. Um, I, I would say that in, in my time in marketing, it's probably one of the most poorly done things on websites <laughs> yes. and, and social media. Um, so I'm anxious to hear kind of your, your take on this copywriting and the importance of it and some of these tips and tricks, I'm sure. Um, I love your guys' content on your website. So, Thank you. Um, you know, I'm sure we're all going to learn something interesting, if nothing else, for that. <laughs> I promise to be entertaining, that's for sure. <laughs> um, and so if you want to ask questions um, along the way on behalf of others, Jonathan, we can do that, sure. but I'll just kind yeah, of zip on... into it. Yeah. yeah. And then um, let's see, we can also, the rules that I'm going to share, we can drop a link to them in the chat also. So people can just awesome. grab them and we'll send them to you so you can share them as well. Um, yeah. So we'll I'll just- those in the show notes there. Yeah, I'll put them in the show notes for sure. And Emma, actually, if you could drop them in there and maybe my LinkedIn link for folks, that'd be great too. So hi, everybody, again. So this is, these are the copywriting rules you wish you had in college, hopefully. Um, and they're really a little bit avant-garde, so get ready for that. We're looking at how do you connect with people in a real um, and, and engaging way and, and doing it in a way that you can actually do it. I really am allergic to a lot of marketing advice. I feel like it's like 30,000 feet, and this is designed to be something you can walk away and apply today. In fact, my favorite thing is when people DM me uh, using my own rules on me. <laughs> so, so you're welcome to do that um, as well. So we're going to just, we, we talked about who I am and where I come from. Um, these rules that I'm showing you are actually the bedrock for how our AI creates social media posts. So you can see um, what the building blocks are like. And it's also the same AI that gets Gary Vaynerchuk 12,000% uh, increase in engagement. I'm assuming y'all know who Gary is. You do, right, Jonathan? I do. 
yeah, he's, he's a great guy, uh, pretty, pretty well known guy. Um, so bad writing skills are incredibly expensive as Jonathan was touching on earlier. They um, cost companies in the US alone $400 billion, it's billion with a B, right? That's bananas. And the reason is it's not only sales and marketing, which seems like the obvious place, but then also internally, how much time people are wasting on the back and forth of just general communicating, whether it's accounting or HR or engineering or customer service or sales and marketing, of course, as well. And, and as a result, companies are spending 3.1 billion on sending people back to school for remedial writing training. Ah, I know, right? That makes you hang your head in shame, exactly. So we don't, nobody wants to go back to school. So let's see if we can solve that now um, and, and help you guys get, get some tricks. So this is um, one that I find, raise your hand, female uh, business ladies in the house that we suffer from the most. Um, and it's the idea of like undercutting our words. So there are some words that are pretty weak to start with and you wanna generally avoid them in your copywriting. There are occasions for these words, but but for the most part, need, a needy team is needy, <laughs> right? We need your money. Think, you don't wanna say, I think, you wanna say, I know. I had to learn this one the hard way when I was going to um, pitch meetings with venture capitalists, mm -hmm. right? So think made me, made me seem like I wasn't the authority. Yeah. I just wanted to say this, see how just does that, or probably, maybe, possibly. So those are all weak words. When you own the room, when you own the pen, when you own the keyboard, you get authority, you get credit, and you get trust and validation, right? And these are all things that people want. And it's, they're all things that make people buy from you, Yeah. right? Yeah, all right, cool. Um, so, this is the one that makes most people blush. <laughs> and if that's you, I'm sorry. But if you are using the word check out as a general call to action or ever again, stop that right now. <laughs> my, um, my, my whole team knows this so well and they're, they're always rolling their eyes now because I've slapped their hands so, so often about it. But check out is incredibly lazy and, and vapid um, as a call to action because there's no meaning behind it. Right, Jonathan? Like you can't in any way perceive the value behind that, right? Because it's just blank kind of thing. So you want to think about really what, what if I was to check out this link and click this link, what would I get out of it? What's in it for me? So that's what you want to put in the copy is, is thinking about the value, the return. Um, and that can come in, in multiple ways. And the thing about these slides, by the way, it's I've written everything out and uh, on purpose so that you guys can see examples. Um, and I'll show you some examples um, in real life too, as we go through. How you doing, Jonathan? Good? I'm doing good. I'm good. learning. You're, you're blushing? <laughs> I, I'm not gonna, I can neither confirm nor deny <laughs> ever in my career told somebody to check out something. Check out. I know, you know what's so funny too <clears throat> is so many people will like then promote this webinar and then they'll say, check out this amazing webinar. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> we just talked about this. <laughs> we won't. We it's won't. okay though. It's a, it's a, it's just a default though. You, we all have to unlearn, um, you know, d different crutches that we have. So a good way to, again, get that trust going is to, is to use contractions. This is part of using uh, natural language, right? Um, and so contractions are an easy way to do that. I like to say that you want to vomit everything out on the page and then edit. So it should be one part vomit, four parts editing, right? And so as you're editing, these are one of the things you can look for. First of all, did you say check out? If you did, get rid of that. Um, and then if you have any contractions that you can use, take, take a moment to do that. A lot of people ask if this makes them seem, if, if the casualness makes them seem like, you know, less business friendly or, uh, maybe certainly less serious. And the answer is no. I mean, people communicate with people, period. And, you know, there, are, I can think of a million CMOs at some very famous companies who seem completely untouchable, un unreachable, unaccessible, because they are so robotic and stiff online. They don't seem like a human, right? Yeah. So you don't want to be that. This is an easy one. Um, we've talked about checkout as a call to action before. Um, so 
here's, I'll show you a couple ways. So an easy one to do is to toss whatever's in the beginning of the sentence. So instead of saying you have to see or any kind of lead up, again, vomit edit, right? So, so look for the verb and start with the verb. This is, uh, you know, the Tom Petty movie, right? And I'm a big, big Tom Petty fan. Um, so the bonus is when you can, f if you can always find the verb in your sentence and start with it, um, that again gives you that command, right? It makes you feel like the authority just by default. Um, and I'll show you a couple other ways that like I like to do it. So let me zoom in so you guys can see this here. So I like to avoid calls to action sort of as all together. So in this case, I'm saying more on scaling the hard way and the right way, you know, with Dan. And then I have all these links and I'm going to walk you through this whole thing. And then in the slides, we'll touch on all these components in a little bit. So I'm going to read it out loud first. We constantly remind ourselves what it's like to be in their shoes with some shoes. Sounds obvi, but treating customers how you want to be treated can sometimes conflict with other goals, more on scaling the hard way and the right way with customer experience, phenom, Dan Gigas. So I'm doing a couple of things here. Um, I'm giving Dan the credit, even though this is my quote. <laughs> yeah. So I'm off putting it on him so it's not the same. So me, 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 even though it is my face here, obviously. Um, Dan, this is an interview with Dan and me. I'm giving Dan some credit who he is. So I'm letting you know just something about him. So you have a reason to be curious, you know, more. Yeah. Um, also, the hashtags are really on topic. Like they're designed to give you context about if you click this link, what are you going to get? This stuff, right? ideas around these ideas. And then I like to emphasize the words that I say as I talk to them. What's it like to be in their shoes is how you would say it. And you can hear me saying that. I say sounds obvi, right? I mean, these are little nuances to make sure you know a robot hasn't written this, a, a human has written yeah. this, right? Um, maybe it's using W instead of with um, or emojis like I have scaling I, I call it I have um, resting bitch face and writing <laughs> I have to use a lot of emojis to uh, to get through there so I'll show you a few more examples as we go through too yeah. um, any questions well I had maybe a question and a partial comment sure. um, it's interesting to me the last two points that you brought up so far I think are very um, scary to a corporate mind, right? Uh, spent a lot of time in a, a corporate setting, and and the one thing that uh, a corporate mindset brings to the table is that humanizing feels very. You know, I've sat in those meetings with with executives and tried to you as a marketer. You're like, look, people buy from people. They don't buy from companies. They don't really care about you know how great, how many micron thick your shoe is that makes you jump, you know, higher. Like Air Jordan didn't build a brand that way. <laughs> it was built around Jordan. And they're always like, oh no, we got to use these jargons and these slogans and, and oh, don't use don't. Like we need to proper write. And the reality is, is that, you know, it's not human and it's a turnoff for most normal humans. Like, I'm not going to read a full web page of jargon, right? And so what is it maybe in your mind that the the humanizing and the emojis and the shortening um, is so, why is that so scary? To you? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I feel most people find themselves boring and they don't know how to make themselves interesting, right? Which is so, Great that's point. so kind of sad, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, so that I think that's the scariest part is when you ask somebody to to put their personality for, forth, yeah. they don't think they have one, right? Yeah, very true. Yeah, um, but you do, of course. Like, really, I just try to hone in on what I know entertains my friends or my family. Like, when I'm writing, I'm always thinking of, this is a radio trick, by the way, instead of thinking of many people, I think of one person. Who am I writing to? Who am I writing for? And for me, it's Lauren, who's my head of growth operations. Um, she laughs at all my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> you have somebody like that around. You do, right? Um, and she's also very intelligent. And so I just think of her as my audience member. You know, when I one of the things I learned in radio, which was kind of strange, is um, 
you know, I was at the time, I'm 47 now, and at the time I was in my 20s. And so I was a little bit younger, but our entire audience was mostly, um, it was album rock. So it was mostly men and they were mostly my age now in, in, in 50s. And they, you know, I'd go to a concert and MC one of our shows and I get on stage and there'd be like a bunch of balding guys with ponytails, you know, and uh, which is awesome, but not, they weren't me is the point, you know, right? Um, and so like, I had to just imagine like who really think about like, who is that person that you can find that, that resembles someone from your audience that you can just talk to that one person all the time and, and write for them, you know? Um, and we'll talk more about those. I'll show you some more ways to like feel comfortable in your own skin as we go through. So that's a smart question. Oops, wrong deck. Okay, here we go. So another one to answer that question more is just writing how you talk, which is really what we're saying. Um, like I, I purposely use words like rad. <laughs> I'm not rad, nor am I Californian, <laughs> you know, but I use it because I, it brings a smile to people's faces and there's so much hyperbole, right? We're all trying to find different adjectives to say the same thing all the time. Awesome. We've all overused that to death, me, me included, right? But we're always exclaiming joy about different things. So what I like to do is I'll write down maybe 20 different ways to say the same thing and then kind of shuffle them, right? Or I have a book here that is my favorite. Um, it's called L is for Lollygag. Uh, clever words for a quirky tongue or quirky words for a clever tongue. And it's a weird kind of um, dictionary of sorts of words like pantaloons, panache, pell-mell, persnickety, <laughs> pizzazz. So that's just the P section, but they're all fun to say. And so when I'm looking to pizzazz up my writing, I go here either just to get some inspiration and change the channel, like get out of the awesomes and the amazings god amazing it's so overdone right and it, it that using those types of words also from a, a reader's perspective it, it catches the eye a lot more especially on something like social media right where you're you're scrolling through and it feels like every every ad every post everything is awesome this was great we yeah were so excited to you know, and it's just, it's, you know, it's like the parents in Charlie Brown after a while. Like, <laughs> yeah. And we're all guilty of that, Jonathan, right? I mean, this absolutely. is, we, we get lazy with our, with our communication and it's part of it is because now more than ever we're taught to be right. So, um, you know, video is pretty darn lazy. You don't have to do any thinking at all, but if radio and reading you, there's the theater of the mind, there's that, um, demand for your imagination to take a role in the communication, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, and, and again, all of these, after we're done, done this um, session, if people are reading every sentence I wrote here, I'm utilizing all the things that we talk about, blarg um, being one of them. We're going to talk about because in a little while um, as well. So more on the talking, saying it out loud, if it feels awkward saying it, it feels awkward reading it. This is a really easy one to do. So everything you write, just read it back to yourself out loud and you'll quickly be embarrassed and or uncomfortable. And I'll, I'll read an example from you. Um, I shop at West Elm. And so they sent me this piece of paper in the mail and it said, this certificate is issued for reward purposes and is a duplicate of the certificate you received by email. <laughs> duplicate of the certificate reward mm. purposes you know you can i can feel that's hard to say Perfect. it's hard to read yeah it's hard to hear and what are they what are they i don't know what they said here's here's what they're saying they're saying hey ding dong we sent you a copy of this coupon in the email and you can't use both yeah that's what they're saying because we thought you weren't bright enough to use your email one so we're gonna <laughs> exactly we're gonna tell you, you can't use them both because we obviously think you're not right enough, so. <laughs> which we aren't you know like yeah. it's they're totally that's why i always think about how on the top um you know those big tupperware boxes you buy for storage yeah. right that yeah. are clear there's a sticker on them that's a sticker with a baby being sitting in there with the thing on it don't yeah. put a baby in here and it's because somebody did <laughs> at some point yeah. that's the thing it's just like oh my god um, okay, so passive language is an easy one. This is totally like, you know, right, right from 
uh, grade school. So you just want to look for usually of um, is a is a career direction and passive language, but um, the green boots, the boots that are green. So it's longer to say, it's not very direct. Um, and uh, the more indirect you are, the less trust you have. So trust is always in play here, right? So again, remember vomit edit. So you want to vomit it out and then look for these things and, and, um, and fix them. A negative call to action is a great one to try. It doesn't mean that you're saying something negative. That's not what it means. It just means like finding the opposite way of sending that verb. So I love don't forget versus remember. Um, what happens right away is everybody instinctively goes, oh, oh, did I do that? Yeah. <laughs> don't forget, right? It's like, you know? Um, and so you want reaction from people when you're writing to them. You want, you're trying to evoke feeling. Um, emo emotion, anything to get somebody to stop for one second and think about what you're saying through their through their busy scrolling, you know, avalanche there. Um, so that's a great one to try whenever you can. Um, another one I like to think about is and. So the you can break any rules you want, including these. Of course, all rules rules are for breaking. And I am a, an insouciant wild person. I I love um, the whole cowboy cowgirl life, which is why I. I was a line cook before radio and now in startup land, it's like the same lawlessness, you know? Not all um, that different. Not all that different. That's right. Just different wallet size, you know, yeah. wallets basically. Um, so, and is a great way to start a sentence because it is how we talk. You can totally start a sentence. Um, and then you can use it as it's, it acts as a pause there and breaks, breaks things up when you do that. So, and it also acts as a dun dun dun, obviously. So this is what I'm doing here. Um, and you, you can literally see the breakup of the sentence and you can hear it also as, as your, um, that rhythm, right? So one of the things that I learned in radio was that the, the, it's the amb iambic pentameter. There's a reason that Shakespeare wrote in that is because it's lyrical, right? Um, so people remember lyrical phrases. And whenever you can do that, the short staccato of how you're writing um, it, it helps them walk away with that more. That's why what um, what's Target's thing, save more, live better. Yeah. Save more, li what's Walmart's? It's almost the same thing. <laughs> I forget. Uh, all the catchphrases, just do it. Yeah. You know, they're all Short. written on this idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so this one is going to kind of stretch us out in, in um, a little psychology here. So writing is... Um, a very, uh, how do I say this? It's a, it's a very tricksy, can be very tricksy thing. You can get people to do what you want them to do, which is what you want, mm -hmm. right? And, and when you are, when you're direct and careful about it, um, you know, really thinking about um, what you can make them do based on instinct. So we all know the five journalistic questions, right? Who, what, how, where, when, right? Yep. And why, so there's six, why is one of those as well. The great thing about why is it always compels the response of because. So if you see a why, you're looking for a because. It's just by default. Yeah. So if you write copy and there's a why and you hide the because behind the link, that's very tricksy, right? People want that resolution. There's a lot of research that shows that when people use because in, in any kind of text, that um, trust automatically jumps up. And the reason is because when you use because, you then get to answer the question. You're resolving the why. So you're giving people comfort yeah. in your authority and your trust, right? They trust you now because you gave them the reason. Reason equals trust. You want to purchase money from a reasonable person. Yeah. And that open loop, um, you don't have to be, you know, like OCD or something to, to have the open loop really dig. And yeah. Just, Gets you, right? Like, I don't even want to click on this, but dang it. <laughs> uh, I gotta, yeah, it's I, sneaky. I have to close it. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Um, so. And then I gave you some examples of how that can work here. Um, and again, I'm not going to read through all these because people can look at them on their own later. But there's a lot of the same tricks we've been talking here um, as well. Um, 
and in this one, actually, I will read this one because I want them to see the difference between what a robot sounds like and a human. So I was wondering how your free trial's going because I'm here to save your time and your evaluation versus I was wondering how your free trial's going. I'm here to save you time and your evaluation. This one looks like someone just copied and pasted it or mm. it's an auto response mm. because this isn't grammatically totally correct, but is vernacularly correct. Yes. It feels like there's a human there for you who wants to help you genuinely. genuinely. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay, so this one is obvious. I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but it talks about that lyrical thing we were talking before, where you want to keep things short, digestible. Um, both of these sentences are grammatically correct, um, but this one it just has a little more staccato to it when you're when you're reading it. You know, um, I'll show you another way while I'm here. Well, I'll save it for a second. Um, so exclamation marks are a big one that people wonder about a lot. And it's hard because you don't want to use them with typically cliche uh, hyperbole, like on sale now, <laughs> or, you know, five days only, like all those car salesman things, right? But you do want to use them. <laughs> And when you do use them, so so here's some examples of when you don't want to, you can use them. Um, like we use them a lot in in our customer service responses. So like, hey Jonathan, exclamation mark, I can help with that exclamation mark, exclamation mark, maybe two, right? Because you want your customer service pr person to be like the friendliest person that you've ever met, yeah. you know, and be enthusiastic and all all that those things. So. Um, I, in fact, I like to use two or three, um, especially in LinkedIn DMs, because then they know I'm not an auto responder, right? Yep. Yep. Um, it's great in subject lines also, because, you know, marketers have trained us to look for subject lines that are pre-written and, <laughs> yeah. you know, spam central. So when you do a bunch of exclamation marks, it, it doesn't look like it came from like the brand, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. Or like you're popping out, you know, like jazz hands in their face, like. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, let's see. I think I have an example here too. Uh, let's see what this one was. Um, this one wasn't exclamation marks, but it's a good. I, I want to stop on this. Show you guys this one, anyways. Right, right now. Um, so a couple of things that we've touched on, and we're going to touch on some more, um, is the onomatopoeia of saying things out loud, right? So pssst, the secret, remember that barf of a book isn't a secret at all. It's a mindset, more real talk for entrepreneurs and underdogs with my rad pals, Jim and Chris. So here I'm doing a lot of things, Jonathan, that we talked about, right? So, so this gets people's attention because it's a, not really a word, you know, the ellipsis does, there's some visual there. Um, the secret is that book, which is why it's in quotes. Um, and then the parentheses give you a little visual. I love the um, I love the under the breath, which is how I would say this, you know. So they're giving you again this understanding. This is how I really talk, right? I love saying words like barf because <laughs> they're fun to say <laughs> and they make people smile and it's unusual, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm also being the authority. The secret isn't a secret at all. It's not like I think it's a secret at all. And then I say, it's a mindset, right? So again, I'm commanding your attention and I'm telling you that I'm the authority on this, even though I'm not really, but in, in my opinion, I am. Yeah. Um, and then this is my way of doing a call to action as well. And I'm giving you an idea of what's to come here. So, you know, these guys, I do a lot of podcasts and people always interview me and they always ask a lot of the same questions for the most part. And so I have to really think of different ways to promote this stuff. So I don't really need to tell people like, oh, you're going to hear a bio of an entrepreneur that you don't even know who cares <laughs> about me, right? They want to, I want to try to give people a general idea um, of something that they will maybe learn from. So in this case, I decided to highlight entrepreneurs and underdogs because I know people love an underdog. They do. Um, and then I know people love real talk because um, that's what I'm really good at. So letting people know this is going to be an unusual episode and if you can't already tell um i don't play guitar <laughs> that's actually just a fake guitar and me doing jumps in the living room with my husband who took took photos one night because we were bored um but yeah so you guys can see like how all those all the stuff we're talking about plays in here right and i and i love your use um 
and I'm sorry if this is like another point you're getting ready to talk about, but I love how in all of your examples and in your content, you're very good at using the question mark, which is a very underutilized thing, I feel like, in copywriting because, you know, it, it's again, it's, it's like the open loop. You cannot read a question <laughs> and your brain not automatically start figuring out like, the secret. Remember that barf of the book. Was that a barf of a book? Was that <laughs> yeah, there you go. Was that, did I, what, was that, was it terrible? What is that? The secret. Do I remember, you know, like you're just automatically, you're like down this trail and, and you're hooked. And that's a great point. Yeah. That's so smart, Jonathan. That. You're right. And the, cause the question mark is always a trick. It really is. It doesn't matter what you're asking. Yeah. And it's visual too, right? So there's just a different, it's not letters for a change. Yeah very eye-catching, very powerful. And I love that you guys and you specifically use it and that you use it in this example because <laughs> it's a trick that's near and dear to me, for sure. <laughs> Wives and husbands beware. I use, you know, we use these tricks on you all the time. Um, <laughs> that's sometimes how I will, I will promote this, this course. And um, we do like mini version occasionally. And I'll be like, you know, here's how to get customers um, to do what you want them to do and occasionally husbands. <laughs> um, okay. So because it's relatable, right? It's relatable. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So we're going to keep going here. So with the exclamation marks, um, again, we were, I was mentioning the customer service. So here's a great way that we, we do it. Um, I'll break this down in, in a few ways. Um, so, hey, uh, Jim. So I didn't say hi, Jim, or hello, Jim, or dear Jim. God forbid that one wouldn't work. You know, hey, uh, Jim, this is how I talk. Hey, uh, right? Happy Monday. I tell you, this is the most magical phrase in the world. Happy Monday, happy Tuesday, happy Wednesday. It always works. Happy weekend. People always respond and say, happy Monday to you, too, back. Or it just is this like non sequitur, but like yeah. <laughs> cheerful, you know, whatever. Um, I hope your weekend, yes, yeah, so, you know. Hope your weekend was awesome. The all caps awesome. Um, super excited to reconnect. So like, I'm not saying I am super excited. This is important. I took out the beginning of that. I didn't say I hope, like I'm doing it all how I talk, right? Um, super excited to reconnect and get your crew that demo. I could have said your team. I could have said that or your marketing director, but crew, again, is more casual. What I find is that when you are the cool person in the room, <laughs> everybody wants to be on your on your team you know so they they like that you're oh my god you're so rad because they probably didn't ever think of themselves as rad yeah. <laughs> but you've anointed them right so um i use smiley faces i know people like i said before i have resting bitch face in writing so i have to zhuzh it up a little bit um and then you see me doing the because here and we're going to talk about this one in a little bit as well, but this is this is the golden a golden rule I have. Um, so so a lot here that you can you can uh, look into. Working the ego is another great one, Jonathan. So you've noticed that throughout this webinar, I have said your name a few times, <laughs> right? Um, so certainly you want to do this in meetings because it works. People love hearing their name said, um, but certainly out loud, um, using people's names, thanking them. That's what tagging is for. Um, but anytime you can really thank people publicly in any way, it's a super win. They Because the first thing they do is reshare it, <laughs> number one. Um, and then they give you the love back. So it's a good way of, of um, inspiring a future favor, right? Yeah. Another thing you can do here that is very tricksy is just tell them they're wonderful. Uh, you rule. You just start the conversation like this. Um, I should have done this today, actually. I was, um, I've, I've been having a bit of a Twitter war with somebody, and I should have just said, "Oh my God, you are so awesome," and then said my like defensive, <laughs> attacky thing, <laughs> which is a trick because what it does is it it puts them on the back foot. <laughs> you know, yeah. in, in a public way, because they start, they started out hot. When people start out with you host, hostily, the best thing you do is kill, kill them with kindness, you know? Yeah. Um, and so we think about that a lot. Like I even do this to my team sometimes. And um, Jason, who's my chief product officer is like, oh my God, I know you're totally using these tricks on me. <laughs> and I, I'm falling for it. <laughs> they know. 
um, but it's work, it, it works. Um, so thanking them, acknowledging them, all this kind of stuff. Um, spell check seems obvious. Now, what I like to say is that two or three eyeballs should be on everything before it goes out. Not so much for spelling because actually a, a spelling error can be a, a good thing oftentimes because it's a mistake that's human. Um, but there's other mistakes, like if the link, is, the link isn't clickable for a second, for, you know, that's hard to get a second shot at. There's just other things that all your eyeballs need to, to catch. So you want to make sure that your entire team is dog fooding your products, right? So whatever sales and messaging, marketing messaging you're sending out, your customers, uh, excuse me, your employees should sign up and receive them. Your employees should be following you on Twitter or LinkedIn. See what you're pushing out there, right? Um, especially because they should be your biggest fans. If they are not, you've got bigger problems, right? Agreed. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and the helping each other is an important thing. And I say this to my team all the time. Like I, I, even though I'm writing the copy, I'm not the end all be all. I miss stuff all the time. You know, I need, I need you. I rely on you to, to um, rely. That's a better word than need. I rely on you to, to be, you know, my brain because my brain is totally doing a million other things, you know? Yep. Um, okay. So we got to move quickly, I think. Um, the golden rule, we, I touched on this earlier. This is on the idea of thinking about who you're talking to, whether it's a, a sales target, whether it's a customer who's, who's already become a customer or your staff or your husband, um, really think about who that person is and what they've been through that day. And, and I, sometimes I'm guilty of forgetting this and then I feel terrible. Um, but you know, they may have 50 people just all up in their business about a uh, product bug, or they may have just been pulled over by a cop for a speeding ticket, or they, maybe they just got their COVID shot and they're freaked out today, right? So on the other, or maybe their kids are still at, at home and haven't been to school in weeks and they're driving them crazy. Yeah. You always got to think about that. Um, that's why these questions, how's the weather? Best question in the world, it really is, because it, no. gives everybody something to talk to and it gives you insight on how that person is doing. Where, do, where are you calling in from? You know? Um, and they're, cause they'll almost always share something else that gives you that, that little kind of keyed in thing um, where, you know, you know, you need to, you need to break the ice or maybe you need to, to dive forward, just yeah. feeling the room. Like um, I always follow my whole team on social. So I have a clear understanding if they're having a bad day and I'm, if it's, you know, a salesperson, I'm not going to sweat them if they, didn't close a deal because I can see, <laughs> you know, it's not the time to do it, right? Yeah, giving a safe place to land. Sometimes I call it that when you're using those introductory things or the, the questions because you know there's something else there, but we need a safe place to land first and then we can travel to where we need to go type thing. I love that phrase, exactly. And that it just goes throughout and this is a lot this is how you make customers evangelists right um I, I was just talking to one of my new sales reps and he's so awesome and i said you're the thing i want you to learn to do the most right now like you're amazing and everything else so your one thing that i want you to get better at is making friends like <laughs> because friends evangelize so i want you to start the start the sale with like asking questions let them talk right um, a great way to do this in writing is through time zones. So I can't do math as a fiction writing major. <laughs> you know, math is not my favorite. I have, I have a real, look at this even, I have like a real calculator. <laughs> What's wrong with me? And it's a crappy one too. I mean, you know, <laughs> but that's what I use. Um, so time zones, you know, we have staff in London and, and California and Denver in the East Coast. So that's a lot of math for us to do. And we have customers in Australia and uh, all over the place. So we've learned to just do the math for them. Um, I did this in radio because at XM we were, we were, you know, across the country, but just say 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern for whoever you're talking to. Um, and you can do this with your staff. You can do this obviously with the customers you're meeting. The other thing you can do here is, um, you know, people don't like choice amazingly enough. <laughs> choice uh, gives everybody analysis paralysis, right? Yep, absolutely. You've been stuck in front of the fridge before. I don't take my husband grocery shopping usually because he just drives me crazy, yep. you know, because he just stands there. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> we, 
I'm gonna move on. <laughs> right, it's it's okay. Um, so when you take the choice away, it's much easier. So so this that's what this part is here. I'm sending along a calendar invite now. We don't wait for people to ask them. I don't like sending along cal calendar links either because then I have to rely on you to click it. Um, there's a time for that, but it's not the first time, the first you know meeting. So. I just say, will this work for you? If it does, I'm sending the invite now and then I send it. Because if it doesn't work for them, they'll tell you, but more often than not, they'll just click it and be like, yeah, great, I'm in, right? Yep, absolutely. Um, so again, this is a good golden rule because it just, it's the empathy, you know, or, or sympathy, but the, the empathy of understanding that this person doesn't have time to think yeah. or do math. <laughs> Make it easy, right? <laughs> sales thing right there. That's it's, cool. Yeah, it so is. We call we call this actually. Um, we talk about the 90, 90 10 rule. So um, at lately, the way that we operate with each other is you need to get me ninety percent of the way there, and so I only have to do ten percent of the work, yeah. and that's just good. That's just good citizenship. It's good. It's neighborly, right? Like I don't need to throw a pile of dung on your plate and make you slog through it. <laughs> that's stupid. Yeah. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see, don't bury the lead. This is something um, we touched on earlier, um, but I wanted to just expand it more. So this is, you know, remember when you used to write um, an essay in school and you'd have your first paragraph, your introductory paragraph, where nothing would really happen. <laughs> yeah. And then like five pages later, you'd have the, the big reveal, right? So now the reveal comes first. Um, and so really think about the vomit edit thing. So when you're almost always, they say 86, the first paragraph, or maybe the first sentence, or even the first three or four words, just look at, you know, is that essential to getting to the meat of the matter? You know, um, sometimes reading out loud can help you glean that. Um, so you want to just be really, really merciless. And, and like, if you're guessing, if you're second guessing or doubting it, it should be gone, <laughs> right? Any question, that's that's your gut telling you, you can do that. Yeah. Um, okay, so this one is one of my favorites. Um, when you write, it's a very visual experience. So we talked about this, I guess, so I'm gonna go back to um, this one so we can see, like so much visual happened here, ellipsis, all the S's, the quotes, the open paren, close paren, the question mark, even that weird word. I've got my hashtags inside the sentence, which is the best way to do it if you can. I'm saying pals, not friends, um, dot would instead of with, right? I've got my emoji and my all capital letters. So there's a lot happening visual here. And then uh, this is, um, oh, I made a typo. I just noticed it. But what I usually do is I, I do like three arrows towards the link. Um, because I used to play soccer and there's that rule, don't take the air out of the ball. And that, that means is when you're passing the ball, someone passes it to you, you don't turn and face them and stop the ball when it comes to them. You let the ball go by you and you use your foot to direct it in the right, direct, right angle so that the momentum still goes, right? So it's the same idea as like keep the, keep the momentum towards what you want people to do, which is click the link Yeah. in this case. Um, so with your eyeballs, what's great is you, were, you can really think about, do I say this in the next slide? I do, yeah. Um, all of the different tactics or, or tools we have here, right? So there's spacing, bold, italics, caps, uh, end dashes, question marks, emojis, the money sign, like anything that can break up the text visually. People who are resume um, experts, they tell you to do this in resumes because people don't read resumes. They literally glance at them and they're looking for numbers of how you've quantified the quality of your work, <laughs> right? Um, especially for salespeople. So it's the same idea. Um, I used to be a line cook, Jonathan, and um, everything that Tony Bourdain says is in that book is 100% true. I've lived that. <laughs> uh, but but I really think about it the same way, like how everything looks looks on the plate, you know, is the same way we eat with our eyes, you know, and, and we read with our eyes, same idea. You want to make it more digestible, more appealing, more shareable, right? Um, words words and phrases that look good get the highest reshares. Sure. Yeah. Um, so this one we're all guilty of. We call it biz blab. <laughs> if you've watched The Office, you, you know all about it, right? Um, yeah. Everyone has acronyms in their work. I remember MVP in, in 
my world post pre-startup meant most valuable player. I was, I was the most valuable player in, as a goalkeeper, but MVP in, in, um, uh, startup life means most, uh, minimum viable product, <laughs> right? Different thing. Um, so for nonprofit organizations, especially they're very in government, very, very guilty of acronym city. It's just such a huge turn off because what it does is it alienates your reader. They don't know what it means. Yep. Right. Good. Kate, I could spend a lot of time talking about that. I have a non <laughs> background, so I'm just. I'm oh, do you? I'm, there, I'm, just... I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I, I used to work, I did a project with Walmart and the IRS and the National Disability Institute. Um, so, <laughs> so much, you know. It was just so much jargon in there. Um, one of the things we learned at that time was VITA was a was a phrase we were using, and it I forget what the acronym meant exactly, but it had something to do with income tax assistance, virtual income tax assistance. That's what it meant, and so we were using that as a hashtag, and we learned that actually the trending hashtag was the VITA mix. <laughs> Remember that? So we had to stop using that. <laughs> uh. So funny. Um, but yeah, this is a big one. Again, when you're vomiting and editing, just look for those acronyms and, and you want to always just get to the natural language, the human, the vernacular, assume that people who know nothing about you will be reading um, your, your text and, and you want to lure them in, right? New people. The, the one, and uh, the other thing about jargon is doesn't always uh, uh, um, appear in acronyms. So a uh, one that a lot of people will, will recognize is on public radio, right? So on public radio, they often say, of course, that was Jim so and so from Wisconsin, of course, that was so and so the puzzle editor of the New York Times, of course. So of course, is super snooty. <laughs> um, yeah. It assumes that you know what they're talking about. There's a there's a place for being exclusive. I love exclusivity because you can use it in a way that makes people not totally know what you're saying, but they want to be long. Yep. Right. Um, oh, and yeah, I'll show you actually. Um, we're, hang on to that, and I'll show you how it works in a second. <laughs> yeah. uh, how are we doing on time, by the way? Just make sure. Okay, we're. Ooh, I gotta move it. Let's move it. Um, all right. So change it up in social so you guys do not broadcast the same message on twitter and linkedin and instagram and facebook it's so obnoxious they're different mediums a lot of your um, fans follow you in different places i call everybody a fan because they should be a fan um and they're hearing that much as message and it's obviously it's not appropriate actually also so um and it's spam it's spam is what you're doing and there's there's almost zero zero value there and it's very turn off so stop that um this is a good one so back to uh, Shakespeare. So royal we and royal you, very tricksy. This is the exclusivity inclusivity idea. I, first of all, take it out. Whenever you use the word I, um, it just says me, 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 right? I mean, that's not what sales convos are about. It's about them all the time, right? And also remember, I makes the sentence longer. I just wanted to whatever the hell, right? You don't, you don't want any of that stuff in the beginning. Take it out, keep it short, get to the point. Um, we... So I could be like, Jonathan, say if I'm pitching you, you, you don't know me, you're my, you're my target and I'm pitching you and I'd be like, so Jonathan, you know, what we love about our customers like you, <laughs> or what we love about customers like you, there we go, what we love about customers like you, see, I did that even though you're not a customer yet, or I could be like, once, you know, when you're, I, I could say something like, um, if you're interviewing someone for a job, so uh, I'd say one of the things we, we do here as a team at, at Lately, is at blah, blah, blah. And so I'm like already making you feel like you're inside that that team voice, right? Yeah. So that's how it can be um, exclusive. It's like the inclusive exclusive, you might say, right? Um, or sometimes like I even throw out like an inside joke that I only know some people will get, right? So if I'm gonna re refer to Keith Richards or Andy Summers, <laughs> you know, most people will get that, some won't, but that's okay. Hopefully it's enough for them to look it up, right? And then I get credit for that. Yeah. Um, you and your, we, just all those these things are, are things you can use. Um, here's some examples that, that show this, but we're so excited to learn about your business versus I'm so excited. You can already see how this is so selfish looking, right? Um, 
And then this is when I'm removing the eye. So you get that feeling that you don't even need it. Just going straight, straight for that natural conversation. Yeah. Okay, so we're almost done. Talked about dog food in your own marketing already, which is great. This is the most important one probably, right? With a clear objective. And don't be ashamed of it. My objective is sales. That's the macro. But the micro objective, let's say it's social media, there's only two, click and reshare. Mm. That's it. Am I, what, is what I wrote clickable? Do people want to click this? What, have, I, have I made it so they want to? Have I given them enough value for them to understand why they should click it? Probably not. Getting clicks is hard. Unless you're writing how-to copy, then it's easy. But um, getting reshares is easy because people, you, people like to look smart from what you said. So when they reshare your, your content, they get, they get the credit for it. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, it's the same reason people will keep greeting cards around because they, they, they associate you with the credit of, the, of the, whatever the message is, you know? Yeah, okay. yeah so that's a good one. Um, people are always asking me, like, insane questions. I think we should change the name of my company. And I'm like, well, why? And they're like, well, the salespeople have a time, hard time pronouncing it. And I'm like, okay, well, do your customers? No. Well, your salesperson is lazy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's the solution. Um, okay, so that's it. So you guys have been so awesome, <laughs> right? <laughs> See what I'm doing here? <laughs> You're awesome, Jonathan, specifically. So thank you so much. <laughs> well, Kate, you are certainly awesome. And <laughs> thanks for coming on. Um, real quick before we wrap up out of here, uh, best advice to entrepreneurs starting something right now in this climate, uh, especially uh, female founders who are uh, in the midst of lots of shifts and change and pandemic and all kinds of things. Put you on the spot a little bit. I'd say um, go with your gut. It's really valuable and it's something we all ignore. And as women specifically, I mean, our gut is, is literally like the place of life and birth. It couldn't be a better antenna, you know? And I did a bad job of that for years and was physically in, incapacitated because of it for a long time. Um, I still am actually. So that's the most important one. But I think this is an exciting time. I mean, it's horrible, but there's a new mindset shift and people are more willing to go with you than really ever before. Um, so, you know, when you have that authority, like the first thing we talked about, um, don't, don't, don't doubt yourself. Don't, don't run through all the reasons why you can't do it or you shouldn't do it. <laughs> Just do it. Yeah. Just treat it like the writing. Marf it yeah. out, fix it later. Yeah, fix it later. Exactly. We, we, we talk about this all the time. I mean, I, who was it? The guy from LinkedIn, read whatever. He said, if you're not mortally embarrassed by what you've published, <laughs> then it's too late. You waited too long. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's great advice too. Uh, people should look that up for sure. <laughs> um, good stuff there. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much, Kate. Uh, we loved having you on today and um, more excited uh, to even the upcoming things. Um, Kate will be back with us um, at a later date for uh, something else really cool. And, and hopefully we can get her around and uh, use some of her awesomeness and her own tricks on her to get us uh, hooked up for the conference upcoming, the Leading Entrepreneur of the World Conference. Um, so excited about all of that. Again, thanks, Kate. I feel like I just took a very condensed master class, so I'm <laughs> going to be reviewing this um, and probably second guessing myself on every post and everything <laughs> for a few weeks at least. But uh, thanks for coming on today. Um, congratulations with everything going on with lately. Uh, it's really been fascinating to look into and watch uh, over this last time period. Um, excited to see where you guys go. Um, awesome Thank product you. and awesome team. It's been a Thanks, pleasure. <laughs> Thanks so Great. much, Kate.